In this video, I am going to explain about the three most important terms in Cisco SDX solution, underlay network, overlay network, and fabric. First, let me to explain about the underlay and overlay. As you can see here, we have a simple scenario or simple network. So include five suites, switch one, switch two, switch three, switch four, and switch five and also three computers, computer A, computer B, and computer C. As you can see, computer A has some traffic to computer B. It can forward the traffic to the switch one, and switch one, after checking its MAC address table, it can forward it to the switch four. Again, in switch four, the switch four should check the destination MAC address uh, with the, its MAC address table and forward it, for example, to the switch five, and again, after checking the destination MAC address with the MAC address table of switch five, the traffic will forward to switch three and finally to the computer B. Also, it is possible to use layer three forwarding. For example, assume that here we have some multi-layer switches or routers, and they can check the destination IP with the routing tables. Switch one according to the routing table, verification with the destination IP of the packet, forward the traffic to switch four, and then from switch four to switch five, and then to switch three, and finally to the computer B. It means that all devices in the pass needs to check to verify the destination address of the packet or of the frame with their MAC address table or their routing table. This is a forwarding in underlay in physical network. And I know that you learn about this method in many previous courses. Also, you know that it is possible to have some type of tunnels between the switch one and switch three. Assume that here I establish a tunnel between a switch one and switch three. Okay. You know that when you configure a tunnel, the type of tunnel is not important. The tunnel can be GRE can be DMVPN, can be VXLAN, or any other types of tunnels, okay? When you configure the tunnel between the switch one and switch three, the intermediate devices, okay, is invisible from the logical view. Why? Because we send traffic from computer A to the switch one. Switch one encapsulate the traffic or encapsulate, for example, the packet or the frame, and it sends it to the switch three and only the switch tree understand the meaning of the payload. You know that the intermediate devices actually don't know anything about the real destination of IP of the packet. I know that you have learned about them, but here, let me to show you one example. Assume that the source IP of traffic is IPA, okay? And destination IP is IPB, the IP address of the computer B. When the traffic, okay, encapsulated in switch one, actually we will have a new IP header. Assume that we use GRE. For example, the IP header uh, or the outer IP header can be IP3 the, as destination IP and IP1 as source IP. The IP1 is the IP address of the switch one and IP3 is the IP address of the switch three. And for example, we have GRE header and then the original payload include the destination IP, this is the inner IP header, and then IPA, okay, and also plus the payload, anything, okay? As you know, the devices in the past don't know and don't see, actually, the IPB, the real traffic. They see only the outer IP header. Only they forward the traffic according to the outer IP header to the switch tree. What does it mean? It means that only switch one and switch three know about the real source IP or original source IP and original destination IP. You know that when the switch one encapsulate the traffic and when the switch three receive the traffic, finally switch three will de-encapsulate the traffic, means it strips the GRE header and also the outer IP header and will send the original traffic to the computer B. This is the tunneling or overlay forwarding. In overlay forwarding, the intermediate device don't know anything about the real source IP or destination IP, okay? Because of that, here we have two methods of forwarding. Forwarding hop by hop 
okay means all hops all devices needs to check to verify the destination address with their table routing table or mac address table but as you can see in overlay forwarding the switch for as as an intermediate device doesn't know anything about the real ip address or inner ip address actually it forward the traffic only to the switch 3 it means that the switch 1 and switch 3 forward the traffic according to the check or verification of destination ip of traffic with their routing table i know that you want to ask me what is or what are the benefit or benefits of the overlay forwarding in compare with underlay forwarding we have many benefits and you will learn about them but for now let me to inform you that in st access we use overlay forwarding what does it mean it means that in st access we have many tunnels okay we have some tunnels actually between the edge devices because of that in cisco st access we have overlay and also underlay you know that we want to learn about the cisco st access because of that we need to know about the architecture components of the cisco st access in cisco st access we have underlay and we have overlay underlay will create the overlay as you can see in this figure in underlay we have some physical devices some ca they can be layer 2 switches or maybe layer 3 switches multi layer switches or routers i will explain that in most cases we use the layer 3 links and multi layer switches or maybe routers but actually in underlay it is possible to use any type of device only it is important to have possibility of creating tunnels between the edge device they the physical underlay only forward the traffic to the destination because of that now we can understand the underlay forwarding and also underlay network and also overlay forwarding and overlay network actually you now maybe you have a question what is the overlay technology that we use in the cisco sd access or what is the underlay technology that we use i will explain them but for now only let me to inform you that in underlay network we use some types of technologies that we that we need them for example because we want to have the most efficiency usage of the links we use layer 3 links i will explain it you know that when you use layer 3 links between devices you don't experience any type of loops or also you can have the benefits of the enabling routing protocols and using the ECMP equal cost multipass and some other benefits because of that we use layer 3 links and also we use some type of routing protocols the default routing protocol is ISIS but you can enable OSPF or EIGRP in most cases we use ISIS or OSPF and also the next technology that we will use and I will explain about it is the lisp i will explain about the lisp and you can understand it and after that in overlay network also we use a method of tunneling we use vxlan in overlay network vxlan has some benefits you will learn about them but maybe the most important benefit that can provide us is increasing the numbers of vlans you know that in traditional switching network we have only 4096 vlan numbers but in vxlan we have many many more than this and also in vxlan we have the option of encapsulating layer 2 frames you know that for example in gre v forward we encapsulate layer 3 packet but with VXLAN, you can extend layer 2 networks. And we have many benefits. You will learn about them. them. For now, we can understand the meaning of physical underlay and also logical overlay. And we know that in Cisco SD access, we use the, this method of forwarding, overlay forwarding. And also, we have learned about it that in underlay network, we use layer 3 links one type of routing protocol in most cases isis or ospf and also lisp 
And about the overlay, we know that in Cisco SD access, we have VXLAN and also we can forward layer two networks. As a review about the underlay network, the underlay network is defined by the physical switches and routers and uh, that are used to deploy the Cisco SD access network. All network elements of the underlay must establish IP connectivity via the use of a routing protocol, in most cases ISIS. Instead of using arbitrary network topologies and protocols, the underlay implementation for Cisco SD access uses a well-designed layer 3 foundation inclusive of the campus edge switch, which is known as layer three routed access design that you will learn about, it, okay? And this ensures performance and also scalability, resiliency, and deterministic convergence of the network. Also, let me to inform you about the physical underlay that in Cisco SD access, the underlay switch means edge node switch one, switch two, and switch three support the physical connectivity for users and endpoints means, for for example, computer A, computer B, they are endpoints and also users. Okay, but here we have one important note. The most important things that you should know about the underlay and also overlay is that one of the most important things is that the computers or end users are not part of the underlay. They are part of the overlay. Okay, actually end user subnets and endpoints are not part of the underlay network they are part of automated overlay network and you will learn more than this about it about the overlay let me to give you more information about the overlay okay and don't forget we extend our knowledge in each video in compare with the previous video okay about the overlay network an overlay network is created as you can see on top of the underlay network through some technologies, some actually virtualization technologies like VXLAN, okay? They are virtual network. All right, also you will hear about the fabric. What is the fabric? A fabric is simply an overlay network, okay? This is our fabric. Overlays are created through encapsulation a process which adds additional headers, as I showed you, to the original packet or frame. Okay, in VXLAN, we can add the headers to the frame. An overlay network creates a logical topology used to virtually connect devices that are built over an arbitrary physical underlay topology. The physical underlay, to, to underlay topology type is not important, only they should provide us the connectivity. Actually, in an idealized theoretical network, every device would be connected to every other device in overlay. In this way, any connectivity or topology imagined could be created. We, while this theoretical network does not exist, there is a still a technical desire to have all these devices connected to each other in a full mesh. This is where the term fabric comes from. It is like a clothes where everything is connected together. In networking, an overlay okay, provides this logical full mesh connection. Because of that, you will hear about the fabric. But you can think about the fabric, the overlay network, all overlay network. Actually, for example, this is the overlay network between the switch one and switch three. And also we have one overlay network between the switch three and switch two and switch one and switch two, okay. All of these overlay networks and also include the computers, as I mentioned before, are creating our fabric, Cisco SD access fabric. And finally, let me to inform you that you will learn about the underlay with more detail, how I can implement it, how I can connect our devices. For example, in underlay network implementation or provisioning, we have two options, manual underlay network configuration or the LAN automation, a feature comes from the Cisco SD access. And also about the overlay network, we have many details. You can configure many things in overlay networks, okay? Because of that, we will learn about them. For now, at the end of this video, 
we have a little more knowledge about the Cisco SD access. We know about underlay, we know about overlay, and we know about the fabric. 